Welcome to a new test and teardown. I already powered up this Pico scope. It is from 1960, and you'll find uh, four tubes in this, and then the CRT. Uh, I don't know if it's easy to see the screen. Let me go a little bit closer. So this oscilloscope here is showing the sweep output. And uh, I got one kilohertz of input. And then the, to get the picture into sync or to trick, kind of, you have to adjust a vari variable time base. And then you kind of hunt. So there we go. There we go. And then this is, uh, this is a signal from the input that goes into the trigger or uh, the sweep oscillator. So, so there's a, a feedback here, see? So you want a little bit of the input signal to go into the sweep oscillator. And then of course you want the sweep oscillator to be very close to the correct frequency. And there you have a stable input. So if the input frequency goes from one kilohertz to two kilohertz, three kilohertz and so on, so it will actually works quite all right. Let's go again, one kilohertz. But what if I go one point? See, that is exactly, yeah, <laughs> that is exactly the thing. So if I go 1.1 kilohertz, see, there you have it. And then you need to perform a little bit of adjustment on the sweep. Oop. And here we go. And there's a the picture again. How do you like that little? knob so that is position also note the picture gets a little bit distorted and again so the picture is actually in the middle here you can see it is not a perfect sine wave if i go in the middle with the camera oh let me try and see how well i can make this Look, like that, right? You can see it is a little bit distorted, and uh, there is a good explanation for that. That is a really, really weird way to do the the triggering, and it's difficult to. So if you look at the, the sweep here in at the other scope, you can see it's not linear, right? So this, this is not linear here as well. And this is, by the way, the original probe. So this is what you've used to probe, probe around your electronics. It's a really thick cable. And I believe this is just a direct connection. And then we have this good old classic BNC type of connector. It's actually not that bad because we got those really good... Uh, Blade contacts in here, springy contacts that's grabbing this really good and firm. So this is, of course, uh, not that bad, but it's not as good as a BNC, I suppose. Trace rotation is done by releasing the CRT and, uh, and, and rotating the CRT. So that is something I need to do as well. And uh, because this is rather dim, I don't know if this is, yeah, okay, this is almost full full power on the brightness. It's running uh, at a quite low voltage. So what you can do is you can extend this kind of a shadow. So now you see in here we are in the shadow. Even if I put down the screen, the CRT or the scope like this. 
See, now it's real nice and dark in there, and you get a really, really good picture. So that is a very nice way to do it. And for, of course, for our transport, it's easy to uh, take the, the shadow in here, and this way it's uh, not so much in the way. Let's look a little bit at the schematic. Um, it is in two parts here. They scanned two pages. Thank you very much to Radium Museum for providing uh, the schematic. First, let's zoom in on the power supply. There's actually a little bit of a funny detail about the power supply. Uh, they call uh, the bridge for the 265 volts. They call the that part D1. Uh, I would, of course, have called it a bridge one or something like that. But anyway, um, then this high voltage, the ground to to that bridge go through transformer two and then to ground. So that means transformer two is um, is uh, actually um, giving its high voltage output the more current you pull of the 265 uh, volt. And that is, of course, on purpose. Imagine when you power this on and all the tubes, they're cold. Then there is no um, um, current draw from uh, the 265 volts. Um, and that means the selenium rectifiers will have it much easier to charge all the capacitors. And then there is no uh, minus uh, 575 volt uh, for the cathode. And uh, that is also fine. Then there is no uh, dot on the screen. And uh, when, the, um, when the CRT heats up first, uh, because that, that is a, in, uh, the cathode in, in the CRT is normally a, a quite small and this uh, warm up quite fast and you don't want uh, that, you know, to have a dot in the middle of the screen for a long time. So here's what you do when all the other tubes, they warm up and start to pull uh, anode current, then transformer two will output a negative voltage that is used to drive the cathode. So this is your delayed start <laughs> high voltage. It's actually uh, really, really smart and simple <laughs> at the same time. So I kind of like that. And if you, uh, let's zoom up, uh, zoom in on uh, tube number three. This is a vertical um, deflection tube and uh, tube two is uh, the front end amplifier. So the deflection tube, all tubes that are the same, ECF82, and that tube consists of uh, a pentode and a triode in the same tube. And uh, the thing about the pentode and the triode, they can't have exactly the same parameters because they are not the same tube. And they, uh, the pentode works in a, in a very different way uh, compared to the triode, by the way. So they got different parameters. And that means when you are using them as they are used here, uh, you see the two anodes, they go directly uh, to the deflection, uh, to the static deflection inside this uh, uh, tube, uh, inside the CRT. And uh, that means you're going to have a um, deflection that is not perfectly linear. And uh, that means it's going to distort your picture a little bit. And uh, it's the same thing. Um, let's zoom in on the tube five. That is the horizontal uh, deflection. And again, they're doing exactly the same with the pentode and the triode. As you see here, the two um, top resistors uh, are to uh, 28 and 29. And uh, the signal lines from them, you follow them, they go straight to the horizontal deflection. So also horizontal deflection got a little bit of distortion due to that. Yeah, that is, uh, of course, because it's easier to wire that way. Oh, yeah, uh, while we added looking at this uh, schematic, you can see um, the feedback or the signal from um, the vertical input go into um, 
the the sweep generator, the sweep oscillator, and uh, then you have a variable sweep. So the trick is to adjust those two pot, uh, pot meters so you will have a steady uh, picture. And this is how all those uh, uh, scopes uh, they were made um, back in the good old days. And that is of course because the sweep oscillator can't stop and start like that. It needs to be running all the time. But if you feed in a signal uh, from the signal you are measuring and you have a variable speed, uh, that means you could you know, hit the, the sweet spot where the picture is uh, standing still. So now we're inside this beautiful oscilloscope. I am very, very impressed about the build quality. It is absolutely beautifully made. Look how it's done. With those ceramic holders underneath each, each tube and those holders, you know, it's big, big surprise to see it this beautiful. Here is the filter inductor and that will be the transformer 2. High quality components, definitely. And don't you just love the markings on each component like that? So it's easy. Look at that. C3 is that one. I mean, that is a good, good service. So this way it's easy to figure out where are we? What's going on here? Oh, this is nice. Well, that is diode 3. I don't understand why they call it GR3 here. But the schematics say D3. So this is the blanking diode together with that uh, capacitor and resistor. So this is uh, every time the sweep is uh, restarted, there will be a uh, fast rise time on that uh, sweep return signal. And that pulse blanks the the display and this uh, signal goes to uh, another one of the the grids on the CRT and this way it uh, turns off the the beam and that will be the rectifiers so this is rectifier one it consists of two halves done it in selenium so that will be the AC input and the positive and the negative and that is the diode 2 for the high voltage. Also, selenium, all of this. I think so. That was is all what that one is also a stacked selenium. But that one up here, I think that is a silicon rectifier. Oops. For the blanking. And that's all there is of diodes in this unit, by the way. And here we go with all the sweep stuff. The main transformer is, of course, inside a good shielded metal case. Good quality capacitors. This would have been quite expensive. And it's the handwork and the, the built style here is definitely super, super good. I've seen many other scopes from the same era, uh, also built more or less the same with tubes and all that kind of st stuff. And all the components, they're just flying all over the place in one big nasty mess. But here it's looking really, really beautiful in good order. Good, good style here. You could actually go in here with a soldering iron and a tweezer and uh, fix stuff. <laughs> this is nice. And it's super compact. Yeah, I totally love it. <laughs> Look at the wires.
you never see people do stuff like this anymore. You know, putting all the wires in, in good, beautiful order like this, tie them up. This is an this is a way from the good old days. And of course, it's really good for creating a lot of crosstalk. <laughs> Obviously, when you have a lot of parallel wires, right? Yeah, but it's everything here is working quite slow. So I got only one thing left, and that is to see what kind of frequency I can I can measure maximum. So I think that that will be what I will do left uh, last my last experiment. I love this. All the little okay, we couldn't they could put couldn't really mark any of the smaller components, but you know it's also easy to figure out what's going on when you have at least some. Yeah. I wanted to show you the power on sequence. Uh, remember Transformer 2? was coupled uh, as a like a current uh, on all the anodes on uh, all the other tubes go through transformer 2 and that current uh, through that uh, transformer is how you manufacture the high voltage for the cathode so here is the uh, DC voltage on C4 the cathode voltage let's turn on that one so you can see what we're doing so at power on, uh, there, there is of course a short current pulse uh, for all the high voltage stuff, but that is uh, very, very fast. Uh, it's coming uh, very early, and that is way before the filaments uh, are hot uh, for inside the CRT. So that, uh, that way, this uh, high pulse of uh, cathode voltage is not going to uh, give any dot on the CRT. And then uh, the voltage is going to go down, and then when the um, uh, when all the um, tubes they get warm, they start to pull current, and that is uh, what will create the high uh, cathode voltage for the CRT. And then you're also going to see uh, when the vertical amplifier starts to work, and uh, that works actually uh, before horizontal sweep is working. And uh, yeah, this is what you'll see. I cranked up intensity to maximum. And let's turn this on. Let's turn on the mains. See what I said? First, this pulse, and then at a cathode voltage is now too low. Then tubes get warm. Cathode voltage get up. Vertical amplifier is working. Horizontal sweep is working. So that is how it uh, powers up without a dot. Of course, you want to see the power down sequence and see if there's any dots. So let's try and do that. <laughs> that is just great, isn't it? And I, I think uh, the reason for that is those capacitors, they are so, so small. There's like almost a ripple uh, on that cathode supply. So that is why the voltage just goes away immediately while stuff is warm. Um, it is of course pulling current and it's discharging the cathode supply really really fast and there is no dots so that is uh, fantastic so let's try and play with the maximum frequency um, capabilities of this scope and this is the sweep goes to 100 kilohertz so I just put in 100 kilohertz crank this up but let's try and do 200 so you same same amplitude. Three, four, five. Oh, it's going down. Six, seven, eight, nine, one megahertz. Two megahertz. Okay. So this is one megahertz. Let's see if we can. Oh, we can even go faster here, right? Ha ha. That is one megahertz. Ha! Oh, I am a little bit impressed. Wow, that is cool. Let's play a little bit more here. So this is a 100 kilohertz square wave. 
Let's see if we can get this. All this trying to... Wait, here we go. 100 kilohertz square wave. And we could probably also do a ramp. You should find all the... Here we go. <laughs> How beautiful is that? I'm actually a little bit impressed. Here is... A 100 kilohertz signal with a one microsecond pulse. One microsecond. This is the pulse I always use to test oscilloscopes. And I'm actually able to get this shown on this screen. <laughs> oh, how nice. Well, that's funny.